Fantastic, great. Hi, Dr. Shay. Good afternoon. Good evening. <laughs> Hello. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Larry. Good to see you. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Sure, sure. And thank you for, you know, putting aside some of your uh, very busy schedule to do this for us at the IFA Nigeria webinar today, August 21st, 2023. Um, we're going to be speaking on accounting education in the UK, the RKF or the University Parkway. And joining me is Dr. Shea Additional PhD. He, Dr. Shea is the Sectional Director of Accounting, Economics and Finance at the Canterbury Christchurch University. If you're just joining us, we are at the um, IFA Nigerian webinar and I'm speaking to Dr. Shea. And um, looking at the topic, Dr. Che is going to be speaking about the accounting education in the UK, the university pathway. And once Dr. Che is done, I would, you know, touch a little bit on the um, RQF pathway. So over to you, Dr. Che. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Larry, and welcome, everyone. And um, uh, what I would like to quickly do, if you allow me, uh, I don't know the um, the um, type of device um, that you're using to join us, um, is to just tell us where you're joining from. Um, there are a couple of questions that I will ask as well later. Um, so I'm just going to pop this on the screen. Um, in the first instance, before I go to the presentation, so if you can um, go to a tab uh, on your computer, if you're using a tab or, um, uh, or open a browser on your smartphone, um, just go to menti.com and enter the code. Uh, or if you want to scan the QR code as well, um, just to um, check it. You know, once you're there, you can you know give a thumbs up at the bottom there um, just to know that you're there thank you thank you everyone and um just because of time uh i'll move to the next slide here um now you will still be able to see the uh, the code uh, as well but just for um you know people to respond um to uh, the question there from which country have you joined this webinar um just to check uh great to to have you from Lebanon and um, others can continue to uh, to share uh, where they have joined us from at the top of the page. Uh, for example, you will see the uh, the code there, um, menti.com. The code is 69342847. Um, just continue to share that. Uh, I've only got five responses, so hopefully others are going to um, be doing the same. Um, I'm just going to be here for about um, another you know, um, 10 to 15 seconds, and uh, I'll move on um, to, to something else. But of course, um, if you have that tab opened, please do not close the tab. Um, there are a couple of other questions I want you to um, sort of engage um, with. Uh, but in the meantime, I will just move over to um, uh, my slides that I want to be using, but it's going to be more of um, just sharing, you know, few things that I know um, hopefully will be um, useful. Um, so welcome again, um, if you are just joining us. Um, on this webinar, um, you, if you could please go to uh, menti.com. Um, so on my, um, just, just a moment. Um, so on my left uh, hand side here, um, if you're just joining us, you can go to menti.com and enter the code 6934. Uh, so my name is Shea Adichina, as um, you know, Larry uh, introduced me, and welcome um, everyone. So what I want to be talking about today is uh, accounting education in the UK, um, university uh, pathway. Um, now, being the session director uh, for accounting, economics and finance at Canterbury 
Christchurch University um, here in the UK. Um, you know, there are things I would like to you know to, to share with you about you know the the um, the course that we offer uh, about our business school, about the university that hopefully you know will be uh, useful. Uh, whether or not you decide to um, to you know want to come to uh, to Canterbury Christchurch University, but I also want to start um, by saying thank you to uh, IFA as well for organizing. Um, this webinar um, um, this time, and um, I want to start by you know just talking about you know, the the business school. Um, we, we call it Christchurch um, Business School, and um, just taking from uh, from the name of the university. And there are five sections um, you know that we have in our business school. As you you know, some of you that may be familiar with. Um, universities in the UK, especially the business schools. Uh, I know in some other countries, uh, the term business school is used more uh, for postgraduate programs um, within the business and management disciplines. But in, in the UK, when you hear business school, um, that actually encompasses um, both undergraduates and postgraduates. Um, and so in our business school, um, we have um, four sections that are focused on undergraduates and then um, one section that uh, predominantly is uh, on postgraduates, as you can see um, there. Um, I actually lead one of the sections, uh, which is why you know um, my presence here is sort of talking about that aspect um, of um, you know, the topic for, for the webinar. Now, when you think about, you know, um, accounting, um, you know, in, in the accounting education in the UK, uh, perhaps, you know, you know, depending on where, you know, the country that you're from, um, going back to, um, to the Mentimeter um, responses, um, I've had 17 responses, and it seems that many of you are currently in the UK, but we have, um, you know, people from Sri Lanka, uh, Ghana, um, and also Lebanon, as I said earlier. Um, but of course, you know, if you want to study accounting or accounting and finance, I would say, yeah, because you know, in the UK, for example, you will see that um, there are um, courses named, um, you know, accounting and finance, accounting and financial management. Um, offering almost exactly as um, you would actually see um, an accounting course um, you know, being offered. And you know, what, what I would like to say is that if you are interested in studying accounting in the UK, um, your searches should not be limited to um, just accounting as a discipline. Um, more often than not, many universities will be offering accounting and finance as their main course. Um, and that is what we have at Christchurch Business School as well. Um, so when it comes to um, the professional accreditations that you might be looking to see whether uh, the course is linked to, and, and I'll come back to talk about that later, uh, you will see that you know it's the main accounting and finance um, that they are going to be aligning with you know, the professional bodies accreditation. Uh, as well, but um, I would like to say that you know, um, you know. So I will be using um, what we have um, at my university, for example, to sort of help you to appreciate, you know, what it is it that um, you know we uh, are talking about when we say accounting education um, in the UK university pathway. Um, I also appreciate that you know, um, depending on your academic background. Um, there may be other things, you know, that, you know, when you go to universities and web pages to want to secure um, admission or to want to understand what the requirements are, um, it may not be clear cut considering that uh, maybe your qualification is not necessarily, you know, um, what is not, maybe it's not mainstream, it's not what um, some of these universities uh, recognize. So I'll be happy to, um, to um, uh, take your questions. Um, later in regards to that. But what I want to do is just to, you know, share some of, um, you know, the uh, feedback that uh, we receive 
you know, from our accounting and finance final year students. Um, and I think that is particularly important because, you know, uh, you know, in my role, for example, I could just say so many things about accounting and finance or accounting education in the UK if you want to come to university. But I think it's equally important, uh, perhaps maybe more important in, in some cases, to actually hear from students who have uh, actually done you know these things before who have experienced you know what we have offered um so one student says you know when it comes to studying accounting and finance at you know canterbury christchurch university stimulating lectures uh, and seminars you know good online resources helpful tutors good employability advice and you know that is like you know three or four things into one um because of course you know when you go to universities um, you know, you you would expect that, you know, they will be doing things around lectures, seminars, um, you know, workshops. Um, but your experience when you go there is particularly important, you know, because um, you want something that rocks your boat. You, you want, you know, to go to the session, come out and feel that, you know, if, you know some sort of value has been added to you. Um, by the virtue of, you know, the experience that you have. And that is, you know, one of the areas that we place particular emphasis on, that, yes, we know uh, in the 21st century, you know, now it's easier for um, a student to go on YouTube to go and watch some, um, um, some videos, perhaps go to, um, you know, professional, um, buddies' website, like you know, IFA here to go to their resources and see some of the things that they have. But are there other things that we can actually offer students when they come um, into our classes? You know, when we interact with them online. You know, what are the things that we can do differently so that you know those things could enrich their experience as a student? Um, and you know, another student talking about excellent tuition and fantastic support. Uh, that they have received. These are some of the things that you would expect when it comes to, you know, accounting education in the UK in, in terms of universities. And I'm using uh, my university as an example. Um, uh, I'm very lucky to be um, um, an elected member of the uh, committee of the uh, head of departments of accounting um, uh, and finance departments in, 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 in the UK. So we call it CDAF for short. Um, you know, committee for the Department of Accounting and Finance. Um, this is a special interest group within the British Accounting and Finance Association. So the, the same big organization has, you know, some special interest groups. And one of them is the CEDAF, you know, Committee um, of um, Department of Accounting and Finance in the UK. I'm on, you know, I'm an elected committee member. And so I have the opportunity of, you know, um, getting to know what goes on um, in so many departments or sections of accounting and finance across the UK. And we, you know, we're a body that also liaise with, you know, professional accounting uh, bodies as well in terms of how we can improve um, our offerings, um, if you like, you know, when it comes to, um, you know, what we teach, how, how we assess uh, our students on the accounting and finance degrees. Um, but it's also very important to have, have well-informed lecturers, you know, um, you know, and that is part of what we offer. Um, so, you know, my background is in, in, in accounting. I did a degree in accounting. I'm originally from Nigeria. Um, I've been in the UK now for uh, over 17 years. Uh, my MBA that I did, it's, you know, um, has a part of it, you know, um, a focus or around accounting and finance, and my PhD is in accounting as well. But before then, before I, you know, came into academia, I've actually worked in the financial services sector, um, you know, uh, for over five years within the UK and outside of the UK. Um, and these are some of the things that actually, you know, make a difference to the overall experience of students in the UK. So you're not going to be taught by you know people who have um just you know purely academic background or you know practitioner background it's a mix of both and so you have you know chartered accountants that have come into academia uh, actually contributing to the sessions as well um but you know 
for someone like me you know, now into research, um, you know, it also gives me opportunity to start to look at, you know, what are the other ways in which we can enhance the experience of, of our students, but also appreciating the feedback that we receive um, from uh, from our, our students. Um, uh, Larry, can I check with you in terms of how, um, you know, questions work? Like, is it at the end of a presentation or? Exactly, exactly. We'll, we'll pick the question up at the end of presentation. Okay. Okay, great. Thank you. So if you have questions, by the way, you know, maybe you have raised your hand. Uh, if you don't mind, just pop the questions in the Q&A. Uh, hopefully Larry can pick that up. Um, but in terms of the structure, now, again, I'm using, you know, my university in terms of, you know, what the structure would look like. It may be slightly different for other universities, um, you know, for example. So we have what we call foundation year. Now, foundation year is for... Um, applicants that um, have not um, attained the requirement, um, have not met the requirement to enter into year one or usually called level four. Um, and so if you have been assessed not to have met the minimum requirement to enter level four or year one, then the option, um, you know, another option would be for you to come, you know, in via um, the foundation year. Now, that foundation year is actually, you know, focused on transition to higher education. So if you haven't met the minimum requirement to come in into year one, that means, you know, there are certain gaps in your knowledge that foundation year is expected to fill. And so in our university, so our university actually operates, um, you know, using by semesters. Um, other universities actually use terms um, and the semesters that we operate, um, you know, there are two semesters in a year. Um, so in, in the UK, for example, to get a degree, you needed to have completed um, 360 credits, uh, right? And those, you know, the, the 360 credits are divided across the three years of study, um, of studying. So 120 in year one, 120 in year two, and 120 in year three. Now, because we operate, you know, um, two semesters, we expect our students to complete the 60 credits that they have taken in semester one before they start semester two. Now, some other universities don't operate like that, especially if they do their, you know, using terms, if the structure that they have is terms. So you may start something in September and may not necessarily complete that until maybe um, May or June, uh, the, the following year. Uh, but the structure we have at CCCU is such that you start 60 credits in September. By Christmas, you've completed all the learning. You come in January for the assessment. Early, um, um, end of January, early February, you start semester two, another 60 credits. And so once you successfully complete, you move on to the next level um, or next year. At the end of year two, you will have the opportunity, even if you haven't decided that when you um, when you start, you will have the opportunity to go out on one year placement. Um, we now, when you apply to join us, you know you can apply with the placement, and you know many other universities in, in the UK also do have you know um, that option. Uh, but for our university, even if you don't apply, you know. When you when you join the university, you could um, you might want to change. And you know, in year two, um, there's a dedicated placement officer that would you know support you um, based on our experience um, of dealing with you know um, you know many companies that have recruited our students in the past. Um, we we will be able to link you up with other companies to to go on placement. But because there is a process in place for you to apply, you still need to engage with that. In fact, one of the modules we will expect you to take in semester one. So in semester one of your year two, so once you get to year two, is called employability skills. And that is to help prepare our students for graduate employment when they get to year three, but also for some that will be going on placement um, in the following year. Now, I know when it comes to accounting um, or accounting and finance, um, you know, many, you know, students that I've spoken to in the past, 
um, um, I actually love working with numbers, right? They love working with numbers. Um, and I think it's, you know, fantastic. It, it's an amazing strength that you can bring onto the course if you are comfortable with numbers. Um, but of course, you know, accounting, you know, education is not just about numbers. It's, you know, yes, you're going to play with numbers, play around with numbers, but it's your ability to be able to use those numbers to um, to make decisions. How, how do those numbers translate to, you know, decision making, you know, informed decision making for the managers, or if you are the one that will be making uh, those decisions. So our courses, for example, you know, will be there to develop, you know, to help you to develop, you know, the analytical and, you know, creative thinking skills you know, needed by global organizations, um, you know, in the 21st century. So when I speak to our, our students, uh, our prospective students, what I'm, you know, saying to them is, you know, yes, this is 2023, right? Um, but you can imagine what the world would look like in, in five years time. So any student that comes in this September, in five years time, they would have graduated, you know, all, all things being equal. And so if that person then wants to go on uh, on graduate training, for, for example, what sort of a, what a sort of an accountant, for example, will, you know, would, you know, would that person, you know, be like? And so, you know, that actually helps us to start to think that, yes, we are preparing, you know, the financial analysts, the accountants, you know, of the future. And what are the changes, you know, that we need to start to make? You know, some of you, perhaps maybe many of you here are familiar with the impact the artificial intelligence is having on, you know, I mean, pretty much all the industries, right? Um, you know, all the sectors, including higher education. But of course, you know, for higher education, it's one thing, but also in terms of the discipline area that we are looking at. Or for you in the next few years, if you want to be, you know, say, for example, an accountant, an auditor, a tax consultant, for example, what is the impact of artificial intelligence in, in all of those? So it's, you know, whilst you come to study with us, you know, to try as much as possible to get you to start to engage with, you know, AI beyond just, you know, what chat GPT can do. You know, there's so much, you know, around the way, uh, you know, uh, technology is impacting on the way audit is conducted and so many other things that you would expect that, you know, traditional accountants should be doing. And so we want to engage you in those conversations. We want to engage you with, you know, how do you see, you know, these things changing and what are your thoughts um, uh, as well? But also is to keep you, if you like, help you to develop the ability um, to take on business challenges across the world. Because, for example, you know, I, I'm not preparing, you know, graduates um, for just the UK market, right? Um, because, of course, I would expect my students to be engaging across, you know, many organizations uh, in the world. But when you come, you know, contact time is important, engagement, you know, but also bring, you know, guest speakers, industry or graduates, um, but including one-on-one -on -one as well the independent study time. Uh, virtual learning environment is particularly important because that is your space, you know, that you'll be able to engage. Um, I want to touch on assessment as well. Um, I mean, I think for most you know, prospective students wanting to do something around accounting, accounting and finance, um, there's an expectation that you will write some exams uh, because for you to be uh, professionally qualified, you will need to write some exams. Um, in the UK, we have the regulator, um, Financial Reporting Council, you know, you know, the regulator for the professional bodies. Um, and they have mandated, you know, a percentage of the, the, the papers uh, or, or, or the assessments to be exams. And so, you know, when you come to study, you know, accounting or accounting and finance in the UK, um, you will, you know, at least for now, you will need to be assessed by exams. But there are other assessment strategies that we use to help you develop other skill sets that we know graduates, you know, we need to possess. So group projects, for example, your ability to be able to present, you know, to be able to articulate your ideas as clearly as possible. 
um, you know, writing reports, essay, case studies, um, including computer-based assessments um, uh, as well. Um, some of the other resources that, you know, could be very useful are, you know, things like Bloomberg. Uh, some of you might have heard of Bloomberg before. Um, we have, you know, um, a trading room in uh, in our university. Very few universities have that in the UK. But it's, a, you know, a platform where you can actually, apart from, you know, um, using it for studying, you know, in some of your modules, um, you can also have, um, you know, a self-paced, you know, training course where you get, you know, certified. Um, and as a student, for example, you will get that for free rather than you are paying if you were to do that outside of uh, of the university. Now, I just want to, you know, share this in terms of, you know, the destination uh, of some of our graduates um, in the UK. But as you can imagine, you know, there are um, some big organizations there that are operating in, you know, many other jurisdictions um, outside of uh, outside of the UK. Um, but the point I want to make here is that, you know, the fact that you come to study accounting in the UK, for example, you know, uh, uh, accounting degree doesn't necessarily mean that you will end up with, you know, with a partner or, you know, or an accounting firm, right? You know, there are so many organizations. I tell my students, you know, when you come to study accounting or accounting and finance, you know, you can almost be certain that somebody somewhere, one organization or another um, in different parts of the world will need your service. They will need your skill set. Right. So think about the NHS um, here, um, you know, largest employer in the UK. They still need, you know, um, graduates of accounting and finance, um, you know, Think about weeks um, if you are familiar with the UK, um, but you know it doesn't mean that you need to end up, you know, your career with an accounting firm. But if an accounting firm is, you know, um, what motivates you? Of course, we have professional accreditations, right? Um, you can see the Institute of Financial Account uh, Accountants there, um, you know, but also other ones like you know, the ACCA, ICAW, CIMA, and our course is um, accredited by them. So it means that if you study with us, for example, when you graduate, you will have, you know, um, FIWA exams um, to write before you um, become qualified. Um, but, you know, committing, you know, your time, whether it's um, one year, two years, three years, depending on when, you, you know, what you're bringing and where you're going to join um, uh, on, on, on the course, you know, to study accounting in the UK. Support is particularly important. At, and at, at Christchurch, for example, there are a range of, you know, support uh, that you, you would expect. So in, in any university in the UK, for example, you would expect them to have, um, you know, student support, health and well-being. You would expect them to have, you know, the alumni hub, um, you know, but for our university, we also have learning skills hub, um, you know, to support students in their writing skills in, you know, use of the resources that um, that the library has, how can they maximize them? We have mentors, you know, mentors that are uh, students, you know, your uh, students in higher level or uh, postgraduates actually supporting students, something that, we also launched last academic year um, is what we call the check-in hub. Check-in hub is an amazing you know, facility for our students, yes, to, to socialize within the school, but also to actually get help. Um, you know, every, you know, whatsoever, you know, kind of help, you know, that you can think of for someone who has come to university to, to succeed. Um, and they are, you know, supported by students uh, like themselves uh, in higher level. Um, and you know, I'll be more than happy to to, um, to talk more on, on that. But another important point I want to make here, considering the audience that we have here, is the dedicated you know faculty and international office teams that you know provide you know the sort of guidance support on international students' visa. Um, and I I'm excited about this because you know I mean I said earlier that I. Um, came to the UK 17 years ago. Uh, I I know how incredibly important is you know this sort of su support is you know um, to international students because I was once an international student myself, and so you know that 
dedicated team is there to support you and hopefully you know make um you know your transition to um to be a lot easier um thanks for your um for your time and um now um rather than use this particular um page uh, for your question uh, i would just you know uh, say that we should use uh, the one that um uh, I mentioned earlier the Q&A uh, that Larry will be uh, talking about um, in just a moment. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Shea, for that um, you know comprehensive and detailed information about what it is to study accounting in the UK. I am particularly delighted that we've brought somebody who has the practical knowledge of you know the, the curriculum development, international student support for student and progression into professional pathway uh, when it comes to accounting education in the UK. It's also interesting to know that you have come to speak to us as an expert who is a member of the you know, faculty of accounting uh, um, committee, so, so to speak. And um, thank you once again. We're gonna take um, the questions. I think we have a few questions now, but um, before then, I will just quickly run through the QCF pathway, um, given that uh, you, you, you spoke about the RQF pathway. I'll just quickly run through the QCF pathway. I believe we all can see my screen. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So I'll run through the QCF pathway and hopefully by the end of my slide, we would have um, you know questions to, to quickly attend to. So the, the, the RQF pathway, sorry, B before now, it used to be called MVQ. That's called the National Vocational Qualification, MVQ. And then later on, the government thought, hang on a minute, we need to change this word MVQ. Let's change it, and it, it was changed to QCF, which is Qualification Credit Framework. And again, government thought, hang on a minute, we need to change this again, and now it's called RQF. So the RQF is what we previously known as um, NVQ, but it's not called National Vocational Qualification anymore. It's called Regulatory Qualification Framework. Such qualification, um, that which is provided by awarding bodies, awarding organization or awarding body are the one that sort of, you know, develop the standard and of course issue the certificate. Such awarding body are expected to be regulated by a body in the UK called of call. And usually when the awarding body writes qualification, they are mapped to you know, a certain um, um, level of university qualification. I'll be speaking about that a little bit later. So for the purpose of this uh, webinar, we will be talking about the qualification as, as, that has been designed by an awarding body called uh, the Award for Training and Higher Education, the ATHE. The ATHE and the um, Institute of Financial Accounting forge partnership to deliver uh, or to sort of you know roll out these the qualification and it is you know popularly known as IFA Direct. So with IFA Direct, it's a pathway or a route to professional membership. In which case, it means that if you have chosen to go through the RQF pathway to study accounting through the RQF pathway one of the choice or one of your best option is the IFA Direct. The IFA Direct will not only allow you to achieve your ambition to becoming a qualified, I mean, a graduate accountant, it will also allow you the route to membership of the Institute of Financial Accountant. And for example, new entrants will, of course, start off the IFA program. And then if you take the level four qualification, you will be you know, eligible for intermediate financial accountant membership, IFA member. And of course, that will open the Australia door for you and you'll become a member of the Institute of Public Accountant in Australia. If you go a bit further down or say you take the level six qualification, that will open opportunity for you to become an, a, an associate member of the Institute of Financial Accountant. And that can set the, you know, a foundation for you to take in the level seven or can, it can be an entry criteria for you to take the level seven extended diploma in accounting and finance, which is also suitable for IFA member who wants to kind of develop their knowledge. 
And that qualification at level seven is equivalent to a master's, I mean, is developed at master's level, in which case you can use that um, level seven qualification to kind of sort for exemption into um, some of the masters of, in accounting and finance qualification in some of the UK university. It's a worthwhile qualification to invest on. Um, you know, it's pretty much online. Most of the center that delivers IFA does deliver it online. And it comprises of 14 units and the 14 units, you know, spread across, you know, level four units to level seven. Remember we spoke about level four, which allows you to, you know, get access into intermediate financial accountancy uh, qualification of the Institute of Financial Accounting. And most time, level four qualification, I, I believe uh, Dr. Shea mentioned, it seems to, uh, it's equivalent to year one of, you know, a university. And the level five is more or less year two. Level six qualification is year three, which is more or less uh, the final stage of university qualification. Some university will accept that qualification for a top of BSc, or some university will even accept that qualification for you to progress onto a top up master's qualification. You can get exemption if you have, you know, relevant prior knowledge, or if you have relevant uh, qualification, you can get exemption to jump onto the qualification. And the IFA has a website where you will be able to look at and see where your qualification sit and whether or not your university have been recognized such that you can use that certificate here from your university to kind of uh, ask for exemption. Now, it is important to mention that the Institute of Financial Accountant, you know, sits side by side with all other relevant professional accountancy body in the world, because IFA is also an IFAC uh, recognized accounting professional body. And the beauty of IFA is that it sort of, you know, sits specifically or kind of focused more on SMEs, in which case, if you want to add value to small businesses in the UK or perhaps around the world, the IFA qualification is such a you know, fantastic one. And let me kind of uh, 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 copy Dr. Shea. I, 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 I came into the UK to study for my master's many years ago. And one of the things that I found very useful in the journey is for me to join the Institute of Financial Accountant. And I think it is time for me to start to speak about becoming a fellow of the Institute, having spent over five years as an associate member. Again, you'll get support from, you know, the very, wherever center, there are different centers where you can kind of sign up to take your IFA courses. And um, don't forget that um, it, it's taking you towards a pathway to not only becoming a member of the Institute of Financial Accountant, but of course, it's also gonna open the door for you to take some top-up qualification from some certain university. So you get support 24 hours, you know, because some of these programs are online, you get program guidelines, and you would also have access to IFA technical resources should you sign up for the IFA Direct. And, you know, this qualification is also useful for existing members who want to kind of develop their knowledge within the accounting profession. Well, um, you know, I mentioned that already that uh, the qualification will provide a pathway for you if you want to become a member. It would also help you to develop your knowledge in terms of continuous professional development if you're already a member of the Institute of Financial Accountant. Like I said, the ATHE does not deliver this qualification. They are just the awarding body. That's the body that issues the certificate. The IFA does not deliver this qualification. They are just a collaborative partner in terms of pathway to membership for anyone who is taking this qualification. There are centers that has been approved or that have been approved by ATHE who are expected to deliver this qualification. Some of these trend centers are referred to as training providers, while some of them are universities in various countries. And it'll be interesting to see you sign up for, you know, uh, with some of these centers, or perhaps even contact them to make an inquiry. The centers are expected to provide access to their portal so that you can have access to resources. They will provide you academic uh, advisor. They'll provide you the assessment that supports, you know, your progression onto the qualification. They will mark your assessment. And then upon your completion, they will recall or they will request ATHE to issue you a certificate. The center themselves don't issue certificate. They have to kind of submit, you know, what we call uh, uh, um, a notice of completion or um, record of achievement to, uh, um, to ATHE. 
and those records of achievement would have been internally assessed and of course sometimes are subject to external verification or external quality assurance of the ATHE and it will provide you support with your study and then once you're done ATHE will issue certificate and remember the ATHE is an off core awarding body, which is more or less uh, similar to the likes of BTEC, similar to the likes of City and Guilds, NCFE, and all of that. Look, the IFA Direct is more or less, an, uh, I mean, it is an RQF pathway to uh, becoming a financial accountant, whether, uh, you know, membership, uh, becoming a member of a professional body, or, uh, you know, kind of exploring the top up pathway or the top up option to advance in your career. Now, if you need further information around the IFA Direct, um, we have a dedicated education manager, Susan. Susan will be happy to kind of share more light into um, what IFA Direct is all about, or perhaps you're on this webinar, you're thinking of, you can put up a center within uh, your jurisdiction or your location to start an IFA qualification. Please contact Susan or you are uh, somebody who just want to begin a career in accounting and finance, and you just don't want to go through the university, please feel free to jump on the opportunity that the IFA Direct will provide you. You can get additional information on a dedicated page on IFA website. Um, it's ifa.org.uk slash learning slash IFA Direct. And we have uh, a very useful material on YouTube that kind of, you know, give you a short insight into what IFA direct is all about. I hope that helps in terms of uh, the qualification or the accounting qualification going through the RQF pathway. Just to wind up, uh, to wind up is just to let you know that the ATH is a global awarding organization that is regulated by Ofqual. Ofqual is the organization that regulates qualification in the UK and of course, international regulator. ATH works with over 230 centers in 50 countries to complement a strong brand presence in the UK. I thank you so much for listening and I hope that you are able to make informed decision as to what next for you and how you will navigate your accounting career. Thank you. <laughs> right, I mean, I just wanted to add uh, as well, you know, because I did mention that, you know, um, one of the professional accreditation uh, that we have is with the IFA. Um, so if you studied accounting and finance um, with us, for, for example, it means that you will be, um, you get exemption for um, levels four, five, and six. Um, so you, you only have, you know, um, level seven, two papers from level seven to become a full member of, um, um, of IFA. Well, that, that, that's very interesting, Dr. Shea. I think I, I often say to people that the beauty of any certificate that you get from any university is the doors that the certificate can open for you. And it's interesting to know that a degree from the Canterbury Christ Church University will enable students that opportunity to kind of go straight into IFA membership. And I think that's a very useful one to mention. And um, again, um, it's, it's always a pleasure. And in fact, it's sometimes... Uh, seems very intimidating to be sitting with uh, the boss, <laughs> but you know, <laughs> we, it's a pleasure. You know, it's a pleasure. Yeah, we did it. And thank you for you know honoring our call, and thank you for sharing you know such a useful information with all of us on this webinar. Uh, we have a few questions, and one of the questions is that: Are there any short courses and professional development? Um, so we're going to, I'm going to answer that question and I'm also going to ask, ask Dr. Shea to answer that question. I suppose what the person is asking for is that apart from the full accounting degree, are there short courses that um, um, the, that they can do in the UK? I believe that's, you know, how the question is, you know, uh, that's the expectation of the questionnaire or the person asking the question. So uh, let me answer from the point of view of IFA. We have... Um, short courses and we also have seminars we have conferences that you can of course are uh, key into um, the courses are you know not only the ones that you can um, let me say not only is the one that you can visit uh, London for short courses so we have 
those which you can join online. Yes, yeah, so we have CPD that are coming up, which you can key into, that can help you, that can support your career development. Some of these are online. And also, I think soon IFA will be rolling out some short courses that would allow you to come to London on a short-term study visa or, or on, a short, on a visitor visa where you can just do three, four days executive master's class, something like that. So in terms of short courses, August 22nd, we'll be having a course on guiding accountant in transition from compliance to advisory. On 24th August, we'll be having a course on building an effective financial team. 7th September, we're having a seminar or online CPD call forecasting. On the 20th of September, we have a CPD for improving your data, your data security. 26th September, we have CPD on how can account, account payables automation help SME survival. 29, costing and pricing. And look, I can't put all the short courses on this page. That's why there is a link to where, you know, you can see more of the short courses that the IFA um, offers. And also some of the ATHE seminar um, centers also offer short courses. So for example, you could choose to take one unit, you could choose to take two units, or you could choose to take three units. So Again, that can be short course on its own. So you can reach out to the centers to ask them and say, do you have short course I can jump on? So Dr. Shea, in terms of, um, uh, from the university point of view, apart from the full accounting degree, do you yeah. have short courses that people can, you know? Yeah, I mean, yeah, thank, thank, thank you, Larry. I'm now, at, at the moment, no, but, you know, interestingly, I was having a chat with, um, uh, you know, the uh, cost director for, um, economics and finance last week, and this is part of what we have been discussing to actually roll out. Um, at, at the moment, the, the ones that our students can take, um, the ones that you know people can take are if you are a student. I did mention, for example, about the um, certification with Bloomberg earlier. Um, you know, there are two certifications that you can actually have as a student and rather than paying 150 pounds, um, that would be free because you are a student. Um, another one would be, you know, sitting an exam, you know, with the CISI. Um, again, you know, as part of our level six or EF3 module, where, you know, the business school will pay on behalf of the student. The module is designed to actually uh, train and prepare students for that exam. And we are one of the accredited exam centers uh, by the um, CISI. CISI is the Chartered Institute for Security and Investment. And so, you know, you will be able to take the exam, you know, immediately after that module as well. But in terms of the shorter ones, uh, which is not linked to any module, um, we are developing those ones. And most of them, like you said, Larry, will be online uh, that people will be able to sign up to. Uh, but the ones that you mentioned there are, you know, exciting. Um, you know, and I would encourage anyone who perhaps is interested in um, any of those to, to jump on them. And, you know, it's going to add value to them shortly. Good, good. Okay, so there's a question on, please also look at the IFA website learning section. Okay, and those program. Yeah, that's true. That's very true. When those program. Uh, somebody asked whether associate member AFA and MIP, how can they avail exemption into accounting study? Okay, I think it's important for us to, to clear this that the way professional um, um, membership of institutions are designed sometimes does not really allow um, automatic entry or prior learning into you know, academic qualification. But the advantage the IFA Direct had brought on the table is that it has allowed the university to kind of map, you know, your professional qualification to a certain level. So that's the beauty of IFA Direct. So in this case, you will be talking to the university and asking for exemption, not by the power of your IFA certificate, but by the power of your ATHE of course certificate, because that's an of course qualification where the university can easily map, you know, your prior qualification to where it sits in their you know, curriculum as a whole. Do you want to add to that, Dr. Shea? Yes, thank you, Larry. I mean, I, I, I think this is, is, is a very important question because, you know, I mean, every year 
um, we see, you know, prospective students wanting to join our accounting and finance with a, a particular qualifications in the UK, outside of the UK. And so what uh, we normally do is to, first of all, you know, check the equivalent, you know, what, what that qualification is equivalent to in the UK, right? So even if it has never been marked, we're going to be looking at um, if the you know qualification is from you know, Pakistan, from Nigeria, from Sri Lanka, from Lebanon, and I'm just saying some of the countries that I saw earlier. Um, we're going to be looking at you know what is the equivalent qualification in the UK, but not just that because very often for professional accounting um, qualifications, because they are usually um, subject specific, so maybe it's financial reporting or it's personal taxation, so. It, it may be difficult for a particular level of qualification, especially if it's not the full qualification. It, it may be difficult for that to cover um, what the curriculum that the degree has. So what we're then going to be looking at is, are there other experiences that that individual you know, ha has acquired over a number of years that we can actually say, you know, because of the experience that this person has, because of um, the qualification that they have, we will think that is equivalent to, say, level four or level five. Um, mm -hmm. But yes, it's very important that you speak to the university that you're interested in, and maybe someone like me in that university, if it's not CCCU, will be, you know, speaking to you and looking at what you have. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Dr. Shea. Um, you know, I'm still waiting for questions. We still have a couple of minutes to run, though. But, you know, as as um, as the as we we're waiting for the question to come in, I just want to ask Dr. Shea this question. And I know that is an on the spot question, but I hope that I get a very uh, uh, promising answer. Uh, the question is that are we likely to see um, the Canterbury Christ Church University offers a master's in accounting anytime soon? And if if the master's in accounting is coming, should we expect that somebody with a, uh, an ATH level seven can do a top up on that master's in the future so that we can strengthen the collaboration within IFA and the Canterbury Christchurch University? Oh, so the answer is it's it's in the pipeline. Um, it's part of what we are considering, um, considering, um, you know, where, because in, in the last couple of years, we have had, you know, a level of, of success um, with regards to our postgraduate offering. And uh, so we're looking at actually expanding that in terms of the subject area, because at the moment we have the MBA and then we have MSc International Business. And so we are looking at, you know, can we actually extend, you know, or expand, you know, this offering? But definitely if we have something like that, I will be looking at IIF direct. Because at the moment, we do something similar for our, our undergraduates. So, you know, you've been talking about, because, I mean, with IFA Direct, it's a lot easier because of, you know, of the off, off qual, you know, the qualifications that you're bringing. So it's easier to match, you know, what they are bringing to where we expect them to be, you know, for our undergraduates. And surely we will be doing the same thing for our postgraduates. Um, a, you know, part of the conversation we were having, uh, I was having with our head of school, um, last week, you know, as part of the clearing conversation was, you know, in terms of someone with qualification, actually, you know, a particular accounting qualification wanting to join our course uh, at level six. Um, so we're going to be looking at if you want to join, perhaps we may not ask that individual to actually do 120 credits, depending on what they are bringing. If the, uh, the aim is that the person gets a UK certificate. So we're going to be looking at how can we map what they have done to the curriculum that we have and then what would be the gaps there and then they can do uh, what you, you said is top up. Um, even though many universities in the UK may not necessarily say it's a top up, like, you know, Canterbury Christchurch University, um, because some, you know, the caveat there is that if they name it as top up, it means your certificate, we have the degree with top up or top up in, in bracket. Whereas if you just want to have, you know, a degree of business, I mean, say BSc on accounting or accounting and finance, you can still actually join the course based on what you're bringing. It's just that there will be, you know, an assessment of where what you're bringing. So going back to the master's one, 
I will be very much looking forward to you know working with IFA direct in that regards to see how we can map that. Fantastic, and I think it's just uh, one one question to kill or one stone to kill two beds that even if the masters is not available right now, it would be nice if um, you as the head of division is looking at the IFA direct as a whole, looking at what it provides and see where that sits with respect to direct entry or prior learning recognition for anyone who has got the level four, for example, can they jump on the level five for anyone who has got the level five, can they join the level six and, you know, kind of see the synergy because it's nice to see the way the IFA direct and ATH are building global presence. Yes, yes, de definitely that is part of the ongoing conversation. And I'm saying, you know, to everyone here, um, you know, if you contact us to say, you know, this is what you bring in, then we are good. We're not, we're not going to say, oh, no, we don't take that because it's not one of the boxes that has been ticked because for because there are so many qualifications ar around the world. So it's almost impossible to actually have a checklist and then be ticking them off. But that is where, you know, conversations will be happening around, you know, if you have all of this, what are the other things that you have that we can match uh, together? Thank you so much. Dr. Shea, somebody here is asking a question that relates to IFA Direct, and I think I'll provide the answer. The person is asking, Dari is asking, do we have any ATH training center in Nigeria? Well, uh, the last time I spoke to Susan, who happens to be the education manager, um, we don't seem to have one ATH center in Nigeria at the moment. But I might be, I might need to, you know, fact check myself on that. So possibly we can, of course, you know, come back to you if there is any one uh, registered at the moment to offer that qualification. And of course, we can also send, you know, emails to all participants about the progress as to having a center in Nigeria. How can you help members with IFA and IPA in Ghana find job and migrate to? The UK. Sorry, that's out of the scope of this uh, webinar, and I suppose um, it's not a question that I want to provide an answer mm -hmm. for. Um, the internet and the, the lots of um, you know employers are online looking for people to work in the UK. So I think we can we can use that as an opportunity to talk. Dr. Shea, we have just three minutes to go. What are your parting words? What would you like to say as a closing remark? If if if. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Thank you, Larry. Uh. Thank you, I IFA, for um uh, inviting me. And uh, let me start with that. Um. But I just want to say that you know if you're here, you know you're listening to this, or perhaps you know you're listening to the recorded um session later. Um. You know, accounting is exciting. Um. I mean, you know, it, it, if you're here, maybe there is um there is a kind of interest you have in accounting or accounting and finance, maybe more broadly speaking. But I think it's you know. The sort of value that we add to um, to uh, our employers, for example, or to potential employers or clients, that I think excites me more. Um, there isn't any organization in in the world, whether profit um, making organization, non, non for profit, governmental organization, that will not need your skill set. And it's very important to appreciate that you know you. You know the, the sort of value you are going to be adding to the decision making. You know many companies, you know, fold up. Um, you know, in the UK, you know, in Europe, outside of Europe, wherever, because of the kind of decisions that they have made. And when you look deeply into when or how that decisions were made, it's either because they have ignored the advice from accountants or people with finance you know, knowledge, or they haven't even had that kind of advice in the first instance. And of course, you know, I see that even with the tech technology actually um, impacting and, you know, impacting on what we do now, I see technology actually enhancing our ability to be able to do what we have been doing for so many years, you know, um, hundreds of years, you know, even more effectively. But it, it means that, you know, if you are thinking about, a career in accounting, in finance, now is the time for you to start to invest in yourself. Um, and it may start with just, you know, the um, small, when you want I mean, a few credits of, um, you know, the um, short courses that you mentioned earlier, um, uh, Larry, but it could also be a degree as well, or if you already have a degree, a master's, but don't stop improving on yourself because somebody somewhere is going to need your service. Ferguson.
Fantastic. Thank you so much, Dr. Shea. Um, I'm going to be closing uh, my own. I'm going to be sharing my final talk around, you know, what we have in the future in terms of uh, international conference. It's an online international conference that is held on 9th November 2023. It has a focus on SMEs and uh, small medium uh, practice. Excellent speakers line up, six uh, credit, C uh, six CPD point for members of the Institute. And of course you can get um, um, the, the link to the uh, conferences on this slide where you can please sign up to join us. Look, we're here to support you, whether you want to join the IFA, whether you want to get onto the IFA direct, our um, business development manager, business development membership manager, Jonathan Baba is always um, you know, an easy man to to just drop a line or catch up with on LinkedIn. You can drop me a line or catch up with me on LinkedIn as well. And of course, um, we have great community of um, financial accountant on LinkedIn as well. The IFB website is somewhere to be. Thank you so much, guys, for joining us today. And of course, I look forward to seeing you at our future webinar. And Dr. Shea, let me use this opportunity to thank you for honoring our invite. And I think this will set a very good uh, precedent to all other accounting um, and finance um, directors of studies or directors of program in other universities. And thank you for being the pioneer um, directors of accounting and finance to kind of, you know, honor our invitation to attend this webinar. Thank you so much, Dr. Shea. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. So thank you, everyone. Bye. And that's the end of the webinar.